Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aisha al Marzugi, and I am a member within the sustainability team here at Expo. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to our pre-Expo event focused on the future of climate and biodiversity and brought to you in association with our partner, Dubai Ports World. The question of how we might take decisive action to protect this planet and the species upon it, including ourselves, is the subject of urgent debate around the world in 2020. We hope that the coming two days will provide an opportunity for you to see and hear what we at Expo 2020 Dubai and all our partners and participants around the globe are doing to address this critical challenge. We have a busy schedule, so at this point I would like to introduce our keynote speakers. First, we will hear from Her Excellency Reem Al Hashmi, Director General of Expo 2020 Dubai and UAE Minister of International Cooperation. Then, we will be joined by His Excellency Sultan Ahmed bin Islayim, Group Chairman and CEO of DP World. Your Excellencies. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for the second in our pre-Expo series, which takes place exactly one year ahead of our climate and Biodiversity Week at Expo 2020 Dubai. Over the next two days, we'll address the essential Expo inquiry. How do we work together to better manage climate change and protect our biodiversity? We spent our last pre-Expo event looking at space. And today, we're back to Earth with a very firm purpose, to preserve the richness and wonder of the natural world, which we share with more than 8 million species, of which 1 million stand at risk of extinction today. This urgency is reflected in the goals of the Earthshot Prize, which was announced earlier this month by Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, Expo 2020 Dubai, and our partner, Dubai Ports World, our global alliance founding partners of this important prize which seeks to improve life on Earth for generations to come. We stand as proud supporters and advocates for this and other such initiatives. In order for humanity to grow and to prosper, we must exist side by side with each of those millions of other species that call this planet their home. Indeed, Live in Balance is one of the five programmatic series that underpin the entire breadth of thematic weeks under our Expo Specialist Program. And under that banner, our Conservation for Hope Program is centered on wildlife and ecosystem restoration as a means to ensure environmental sustainability. As a means of complementing this program, Expo 2020 Dubai and Dubai Ports World are collaborating together with the Zoological Society of London to unite the world behind meaningful progress on animal and on habitat conservation. Our shared objectives are to make humanity more aware of our connection with wildlife and with the environment. To bring together diverse stakeholders to address the world's most pressing conservation and sustainability issues to strengthen zoological, NGO, and government conservation efforts. And of course, to also drive global awareness of champions of conservation. We are also working with another of our premier partners, MasterCard, to support that organization's Priceless Planet Initiative, which pledges to plant 100 million trees by 2025. This worldwide program will help remove carbon dioxide emissions from the atmosphere and contribute to efforts to limit the rise in average temperatures, all of which is to acknowledge that we are at the moment of no return. If we do not act now, we cannot come back. When more than 190 nations gather together in Dubai next year, for the very first time, in what we hope is going to be a post-COVID world, why would we not use that moment to collaborate for our shared future? Because isn't that one of the main purposes of a world exposition? 
to show us what we can do when we all come together with a shared and certain purpose. When we do come together around 11 months from now, it will be on a site that has been crafted according to the firm tenets of environmental responsibility. Our recent Expo Sustainability Report details the many ways in which we are striving to be one of the most sustainable world expos in the storied history of this prestigious event. From environmental planning and data monitoring to compliance monitoring, ecology protection, waste management, air pollution, prevention, and so much more, we have built our Expo site on a bedrock of sustainable ecological practices. Upon that bedrock, we layer environmental responsibility into our actions and operations every single day. From the instituting of a circular economy to the protection of indigenous species on and around our Expo site. This is where you come in, our international participants, as you hold to our sustainable building standards and align with our sustainable operational principles. This is where our private sector partners come in. For example, in the case of Siemens, whose MindSphere Navigator platform will connect, monitor, and control more than 130 buildings on site. This will provide us with a data-driven insight into building performance around energy efficiency and renewable energy consumption, water consumption and efficiencies, waste segregation, and operational waste management. All of which, every measure we take, will progress us inch by inch towards our broader goal of rolling back the impact of climate change through sustained global collaboration. And this has been a decades-long focus of the United Arab Emirates, from the vision of the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, founding father of this nation, who spoke of his desire to transform the desert into a green haven for endangered and indigenous species. Ladies and gentlemen, what science tells us, we follow. And when science tells us we must act, we do so, as is evidenced by work of the UAE's Ministry of Climate Change and Environment. The challenge of climate change and our need to protect the full and bright biodiversity of this planet has long been a key policy pillar of the UAE. Expo is a platform for collaborative change and a consequence of this commitment to our shared future. Through this platform, let us come together as decision makers and citizens of a future healthier Earth. Thank you all for your time and attention. We are happy to partner with Expo on biodiversity and climate change. This aligns with our sustainability strategy, uh, making a future, a better future for everyone. And we'll be addressing sustainable goals. We're committed to tackling today's challenges. Our carbon strategy, we want to be carbon neutral by 2050. Educating young people on the environmental challenges, we have many programs and plans to educate the next generation on environmental issues and how we tackle them and how we make sure that our environment is protected and safe. The health of the oceans are very important for us, not only just as a business, but also as a human being. We are committed on the initiative of IMO to protect the ocean from the uh, dangerous fuels that are used by vessels. Oceans are vital for the humanity to keep the ocean clean and healthy. We have invested in growing mangrove. In Ecuador, we already grew 150,000 mangrove trees. And we're looking at other programs in Africa and other parts of the world. Our people also are donating and working to clean the beaches from plastic and debris. And we spent last year 10,000 hours cleaning beaches. We want to stop illegal trafficking of wildlife. We are committed to support many organizations who are working so hard to stop this throughout the world, such as United for Wildlife. We're proud to announce partnership with Zoological Society of London. We have to act now to stop trafficking and have a refuge for animals uh, around the world. This is the age of the mind. 
Education is what's going to skill the young people to be leaders and problem solvers. We are committed for many programs around the world uh, in over 45 countries to educate 2 million young people by 2030. Logistic is a very important field and that is our core business. And we are happy to announce that after Expo is over, our pavilion will be used for training, education and innovation of young leaders in the logistic field, which is something that there is nothing like it in the world. Together we can tackle today's issues. We are proud to support Expo on these initiatives and we work together to ensure that these initiatives produce the result we all want. Thank you so much to our distinguished, distinguished keynote speakers for sharing their time and their thoughts with us today. It is now time for us to take a journey inside our very own sustainability pavilion known as Terra. And to explain the Expo 2020 sustainability experience, please welcome my colleague, John Bull. Good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here speaking to you today. As Aisha mentioned, my name is John Bull, and I have the great privilege of being part of the team working on Terra, the Sustainability Pavilion. And as many of you, of course, know, the Sustainability Pavilion is one of the three key thematic pavilions that tell the true story of Expo 2020, along with, of course, the country pavilions and our partners. And we endeavor to tell the story of mobility sustainability and opportunity from a perspective which looks at the global issues but makes them very relevant to the visitors who come and very pressing in terms of their urgency to act. Now, the pavilion is a particularly interesting piece of technology and experience in itself. As you'll see here in this beautiful photograph, it is a large installation sitting on a plot of 25,000 square meters we find this beautiful piece of architecture which contains over 6,000 meters squared of exhibition. And within those, exhibi within those exhibitions and experiences, our guests will be able to wander around to visit our, our cafeterias, which of course talk about the importance of eating in a manner which reflects that well upon ourselves and the planet. They'll be able to walk to our stages inside and outside the building to take part and, and enjoy performances from our expo and from our partners around the world. They'll be able to go with their children into a fantastic children's gallery where we bring to life the world in a microcosm where they can bring water to the desert and they can visit the walls in their caves. All of this work, which, which I've had the privilege of being part of for the past three years, has been with a long-term vision in mind. And that vision in terms of the legacy that you see there is that Terra continues on growing from at the seed of Expo itself into a beautiful flower which continues after Expo and its legacy as a children and science center continuing to encourage visitors to reconsider their relationship with the, with the world. Now, we have packed this, uh, this experience with the most heart-touching and head-touching experiences that you can possibly imagine. And all of those experiences have been crafted with a very particular meaning and message in mind. Now, that message, that message is very, is one of showing, of showcasing how mankind can live in better harmony with the world around us. Now, of course, you will all have seen the fantastic architecture that we have on show in Terra capped with the, the beautiful 130 meter long canopy covered in photovoltaic cells, which not only captures the energy of the sun every single day, but also gives passive cooling to this building, allowing the experience for our visitors to be one that is cooler and one that is inspired by traditional Emirati architecture, of course, which has always captured um, passive, passive energy and the winds that pass through the deserts. Every aspect of this experience is a fantastic learning opportunity. In the middle picture there, you'll see our innovative water tree. Now this water tree is actually capturing humidity from the air around us. 
is capturing and condensing that water and bringing it down in a way that we can actually use that. Now, that in combination with innovative technologies such as reuse of air conditioning, water, uh, and a number of other technologies mean that this building is going to be fantastically sustainable in itself. Inshallah, we will be achieving the lead platinum status, which is the highest possible status that it's possible for a building to get in terms of its environmental credentials. And the reason for that is because of our passion and the passion of our team of Expo and our architects. You'll see on the right there, our beautiful landscape, which you can now walk uh, amongst, amongst us uh, on the site, um, which through our use of local plants, and plants which have adapted well to hot climates mean that we are able to use up to 30% less water in irrigating those gardens. Yet we're still able to have this beautiful contemplative experience which showcases how fantastic the environment around us can be. Now, I always say that the building is just the set. The building is the backdrop for what I believe will be one of the most truly inspirational uh, and uplifting experiences that the world has ever seen as part of Expo 2020. We are determined to make sure that all of the visitors to Terra will be inspired to become the change that the world is that the world needs. Every single moment that we talk to our visitors, that we give them the opportunity to engage in hands-on interactives or read a panel, discover a new creature. We hope that that touches their heart and that moves to their head and it moves to their hands and each and every one of us leaves this experience with a view to contribute to bringing, bringing the balance that is needed. And of course, in the context of today and these talks, it's so pressing that we find these spaces to come together. These statistics on my screen taken from a number of reputable sources, including the Zoological Society of London, show the urgency in, in terms of our impact upon biodiversity. We must consider the choices we are making. And some of those choices we might want to make it differently into the future. I will just point onto the left of this, your screen there. You'll see a good news story in terms of biodiversity. There are some uh, rare honey producing bees uh, fortuitously for them and for us, settled on the construction site of Terra some time ago. And uh, due to the fast action of our sustainability team, we were able to relocate those bees into a nearby hive where they today they continue to produce honey and get ready and grow, ready to be relocated back to Terra as soon as it's safe for them to do so. So a good news story there. And that just goes to show what this is all about. What this is about is that if we make the right decisions, we can make a positive impact upon the world around us. Now, the Vista experience that you'll find within that fantastic thing uh, is one which I believe is truly unusual, is innovative, surprising and thought provoking. And the reason for that, I believe, is that we based it upon two equally important uh, characteristics. The first being science. On the one side there, you will see the planetary boundary system developed by the Stockholm Resilience Centre, which talks about man's impact on the planet and the planet's ability to accommodate some of those negative impacts. It states that up to a point, the planet can accommodate our impacts. But beyond boundaries, that impact becomes irreversible. And once we pass those boundaries, our opportunity to retract is limited, although there are, is some evidence that that is possible. That's the science. We talk about climate change, we talk about ozone depletion, we, and of course we talk about biodiversity loss in the pavilion. But we do that in a way which is unusual. The last thing that we want to do is to preach. The, what we want to do is capture people's innate love of the world around them, that sense of biophilia. We love the world around us. And what we've attempted to do at every step of the journey, as you'll see on the other side of this slide, is to turn that into a journey, a fairy tale, if you will, one that begins in a wonderful world of beauty and majesty and magic, and one which brings in, uh, in peril and threat to that environment. And then, of course, we show that there is a chance for redemption, a chance to uh, for move on beyond that. 
Now, as you approach the pavilion, your first experience is walking down a timeline of the Arabian Peninsula. You'll walk in the footsteps of the mega elephants. You'll hear the leopards roar. You'll look into those periscopes to see the roots of the half tree as they dig 30 meters into the ground. And the message of this, of, of this introduction is that change is natural and change has always happened. Uh, but that change, as you approach the pavilion, you'll see has been accelerated by man's impact. Now, man's impact upon the world uh, is manifest in this geological era that we find ourselves in called the Anthropocene. But what we want to show to people and, and to grasp upon is our innate love of the world. And one thing I believe that sometimes we forget is how beautiful and magical and mysterious nature can be. So our visitors will enter this magical world either under the forest where they will find the root systems of the trees. They'll smell the soil, they'll see the worms, and they'll find out how, how the trees communicate to each other through these intricate webs between their roots and fungal systems, how they're able to harness the environment around them to grow, to protect each other and to thrive. This will be made real through these beautiful environments, which also is made true under the ocean. If you were to go under the ocean, you'll see the, way, the blue whales swimming overhead. You'll see the dance of the dugongs. You'll be drawn across to the pulsing double heartbeats of oysters. And you'll discover that these things are magical. They are beautiful. And I believe that every single person who walks through these experiences will feel touched and will be reminded of what a unique resource our planet is. Now, of course, one of the particularly interesting features of this is that we don't stop there. What we're able to do within Terra is to show how some of our choices are impacting upon those environments. So if you had just walked down through the forest and you had just seen this beauty of the way they talk and the way mother tree protects baby trees and your heart is touched, the next gallery will be one that we call a consumption hall, which is an, an environment which talks all about how our choices around consumption are affecting these beautiful environments. So for example, here you see the Nasher, the endless consumption ma machine consuming jewels of nature such as trees and plants and minerals and animals. And I have a beautiful example there from the gallery of uh, the Arabian leopard. And what the Nasher is doing, because we want him to, he's turning them into consumer goods. And some of those consumer goods are useful, like light bulbs. They bring safety and security access to edge. Others are, frankly, a pair of leopard skin boots. And they are not useful and they are not essential. So we don't wish to preach. We don't wish to say this is right and this is wrong. But we do want to open people's eyes to different choices. And that's brought to life through different experiences, such as this dissolving theatre, which sees the impact of industrializations upon the oceans and its impact upon the life that can survive within those environments. After this stage of, of feeling perhaps nervous, feeling perhaps worried, perhaps feeling a little complicit in these choices. We want to give people the chance to feel that they can make a change and that personally in their lives, they can alter things. And we have zones called the would you rathers, which are simple this or that devices. You pull a lever, this or that. And we ask a series of testing questions about, let's make the assumption that we all need to make changes to bring about the world that we want to see. Uh, but those choices should be personal and should make them in a way that you believe is right. So we ask them, would you do this or would you do that? And here's an example of one of our questions related to biodiversity. Um, and please do think about this. Uh, would you rather save one big animal or would you rather save a hundred tiny animals? And what we are doing with these questions is not saying this is right and this is wrong. We are saying that choices are difficult and there's always a cost or an unintended consequence to every choice that we make. So if you were to choose to save the elephant, who could say that that was a bad choice? But then again, if you were to save microbes or, or small insects who are the linchpin of so many different ecosystems, which would be the right choice? Very, very difficult to say. And we're working across the many, many thousands and thousands of visitors that we'll see to aggregate this information, to gather it, to pass it back out to our visitors and the community at large. So Terra is in fact its own laboratory, its own laboratory gathering information about the world around us, our opinions, how nature matters to us. And we will be sharing that with the world in a number of different ways, through publications, through academic work, through, uh, through more creative outputs too. Now, 
let me bring you to the last stage of our story, to, uh, of our fairy tale. Uh, every good fairy tale, of course, ends with salvation. Now, we didn't want to suggest that everything will automatically be right. That's not the message of terror. The message of terror is that if we act, if we're innovative, if we're ingenious, if we have the right values and act upon them and we come together, then things will be all right. And that's made true in this gallery called the Laboratory of Future Values. In here, you'll find a large space presided upon by Octavia, our octopus there clinging on to that uh, pillar in the middle of your screen. She oversees a number of installations which show ways, ideas and thoughts that we might grasp upon to move forward. So for example, in, in terms of use of land and food production, you'll see some vertical farming. We also talk about water use and we look back upon the Falage system of irrigation from this region of the world, which relied upon community values of sharing. And we suggest that if we focus on these values and if we look to fantastic case studies that you'll find, for example, those two text panels, one of them showcases the reintroduction of the Arabian Oryx both here uh, and into Africa with us, um, which has been a fantastic success led by the UAE government. Uh, you will be able to take inspiration and you'll be able to help move things forward. And that really is the sense of this experience. Because we wish that as people move through this gallery and on into the last experience of the space, uh, which we call the hive of ideas, uh, which it acts as our closing call to action. We want to make sure that people are personally empowered in this space. We know that we've taken people on a roller coaster of emotions. And with that roller coaster, we feel they're on an upward trajectory as they leave the pavilion. We want to connect them to initiatives here in the UAE and around the world where they can personally pledge their time, their efforts, their ideas, their energies to help come together to make a different world. And we hope to continue that conversation as they move out from terror and beyond. Now, terror itself, there is so much more to say, and I really hope I get the chance to speak to you about it again. But we are committed to being storytellers. We're committed to continuing to promote this message uh, that's so key to Expo 2020 about mankind living in harmony with the world around them, that we didn't want to just leave it at the galleries. We wanted to reach out to you now we wanted to show you that we are able to inspire both young people and older people, everyone to come together. And one output that we've created is we've worked together to create this a fantastic stop motion animated short film, which is called Alia in Terrorland. Now, this is a film all about an Emirati girl who discovers just how important she can be in the fight to rebalance humanity's relationship with the natural world. In a journey that's inspired by the terror experience, she wakes in a forest, confused and disorientated. She wants to find her brother, Majid. She wants to, to discover and to help him. And to do so, she has to walk through these troubled natural environments, which mankind is acting negatively upon. Um, but she finds that not everything is lost. She realizes that she has the power to shape a better future for our planet. And it, as a matter of fact, that's the message of terror we all do. So please join with me and enjoy this trailer for our stop motion animation film and a sneak preview of behind the scenes. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Sometimes, in order to make a difference, we need to be brave and take the first step into a whole new world. Are you ready? Helia and Terraland live the experience at Expo 2020. We realize that storytelling and creativity plays a vital role in connecting people and sharing globally important messages. And this is where the vision of the making of Alia and Terra Land came about. We wanted to make a story where we have a girl who a lot of our visitors can identify with. 
The girl is someone who has the power to make a difference in the world. But the thing is that she doesn't really realize it yet for whatever reason. But through this journey and the characters she meets, she eventually realizes that she does have a role in shaping a better world. What we aim to achieve through the making of this film is to integrate sustainability into all aspects of our work streams, starting from our built assets on our Expo 2020 site, all the way to the creative content and ideas. And just how Alia and Thailand is being developed largely out of recycled and recyclable materials, our Expo site is also being built with sustainable materials. Wherever possible, we've looked to reuse and repurpose old materials. We've looked to source natural materials which can be returned to their environment after the shooting of the film. Roku Vilmis, no, ega me nüüd dekoratsioone väga palju ära ei visk, kui me kasutame mäge siit pinnavorme, jälle läheb materjal teistpidi pöörame ja saab uuesti kasutada. Et ma arvan, et mõned asjad meil siin on, mida me kasutame, tõenäoliselt on ikka väga vanad. Ma arvan, et 30 aastat küll, mis on nagu jälle materjaline, läheb uuesti keiku. Põhiliselt kord on kohtus minu poolt on tegelikult on see plastiviin, mis on see sama plastiviin on nagu 15 aastat vana. Ja mõned selle ka teinud täiesti täiesti luuevalt aru igasugu erinevaid vorme ja, ja ühtlise poolid nüüd ka tegelaisi. Ja noh, me oleme näinud ka reaalselt seda pilti televiisoritest või noh, kust iganes. Ma ei ole oma silmaga näinud, aga noh, ma tean, et sellised prügi täis ookeanid on olemas. Et see on ausalt üldes väga masendav. Et ma ei kujuta, et noh, ütleme nii, et võiks ju inimesed hakata selle filmi Tegemise ei ole rohkem veel mõtlema selle peale, mida nad teevad. Maailma käekäik sõltub igast ühest meist. Nii see ei öelda see filmi peategelane alja. Ikkagi saab selge sõnumi, et nüüd on, nüüd on aeg sul midagi teha. Et iga üks meist tegelikult saab midagi teha ja, ja võiks, võiks ja peaks tegema midagi planeedi heaks. To me, I think it would be great if people, after seeing this film, when they go to the pavilion, they can actually recognize the characters and point them out and go like, oh, that's the giant fish I saw in the film. Or this is the forest where Alia's journey first began. And I think this would create another layer of excitement. So visitors will get to experience the journey of Alia through their own eyes. I really really hope that people are going to love this story as much as I do. But I think all of us will really grasp on to the sense of hope. The hope that we can steer a better way to the future. And importantly, everyone will be inspired to play a part in that. Thank you so much, John, and of course, Alia, and the whole team behind bringing that adventure to life. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot more to come. Our next session will begin at 10 a.m. UAE time, so please stay with us.